Once upon a time, there was a scruffy little town in the middle of nowhere with a lot surrounded by big trees and an ocean full of fish and a little tiny school in the back room of a hotel. In 1910, there were four kids enrolled in edu public education at, at uh, Campbell River. By 1920, there was a two-room school on top of a hill and kids were coming and everything was getting more and more organized. And by 1948, the Campbell River Elementary Junior Senior Secondary School was in full swing. And in that school, there were two girls. Um, their names were Rosalie Spears and Joyce Doherty, and they were, wanted to dive into the joys of journalism and create a newsletter. And after that, they wanted to do an annual, and they came up with a name for their newsletter and their annual. It was the first two letters of Campbell, the first two letters of River, and the first two letters of High, and they came up with Carrie High, and that's what they named their news letter and that's what they named their annual. Well, the name stuck. And by, oh well, Joyce, by the way, won a school sweater for coming up with the name Campbell River in 1948. By 1955, when Diana Hudson Kratz and 17 of her um, fellow grads paraded in their grad ceremony to the tune of Colonel Bogey, which is from Bridge in the River Quiet, goes da dum. Da, 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 dum, dum, dum. Anyway, these 18 kids came into the gym to Colonel Bogey, and they came in as Carrie High grads. And that's what they called themselves, and that's what they were. The name stayed with the student body throughout. And by 1966, when the new school was built in its present location, Carrie High was an official entity in BC public education and a brand new school and a school that was destined to be, uh, well, a lighthouse, a cutting edge, peculiar, wonderful uh, school full of all kinds of things that were going on that were innovative and exciting and student-centered. Now by 19, uh, no, that's wrong. By 2009, when I retired, Cary High was a full-fledged school with uh, all kinds of traditions, uh, both academic, sports, arts, culture, that we were very, very proud of. And uh, we continue to be proud of this school now. I've been out of it for a while, but uh, lots of other people have too. We have with us today Paul Wurz, who was one of the first teachers in 1966. He teaches uh, geography and PE and was there for 20 years and saw the school evolve um, and become sort of stable and uh, wonderful. We have a, uh, one of the first grads from 1966, Ann Young, who's been with the school ever since in various ways, staying involved and contributing to the culture that is there and alive and well now. And we have Greta Hamilton, who is this year's grad. So we have a 50 year span between 1966 grad and 2000, 2016 grad, Greta Hamilton. Uh, she's been in the French immersion program in this district since forever and she's graduating now. And we're gonna start with her and she's going to tell us what she thinks of being in Cary High, the kind of extracurricular um, opportunities she's taken advantage of, the kind of courses she's taken, and what she thinks of the place. So, Greta. Sure. Um, uh, I think Cary High, I think of it as a very intimate school um, to attend because everyone's very engaged in your life and the teachers are very active in um, talking to you and supporting, to, supporting you not only as a student but as a person as well. Um, and when I think about it, I, th I think when I'm walking down the hallways, there's um, Joe Shields' music composition class and they're always in the hallways playing the guitar. <laughs> um, so oftentimes you're sort of just serenaded while you're walking down the hallway. Um, and so if I were ever telling anyone about Cary High, that's what I would say. And yeah, the extracurriculars I've taken part of um, have included theater and sports, sort of, and um, 
interact, rotary interact as well. Um, so starting with theater, we have a, a very flourishing theater department. We put on a musical every year and a play, and we have a, both a junior and a senior improvisation team. Um, and so improv, I've been part of that since grade nine. And we've gone on to participate in both Islands and North Island Cups with the Canadian Improv Games. Um, and we've never won anything. <laughs> We're kind of like the underdog team, <laughs> but everyone absolutely adores Carry High when we go. And I think the reason being is that our school has always been very accepting of theater mm -hmm. students, whereas at other schools, the theater students aren't aren't as um, well well received as we are, and our school really supports that theater department. So when we're there, we're just having a good time, and everyone can tell that you know we we all fit in together. So um, improv the play, the same thing. There's a North Island Regional Drama Festival that we attend every year as well, and we have won that in the past. Um, in the play that we were in this year, it was called Mbeth, and it was a parody of Macbeth. Um, it was hilarious. But we, we ended up coming um, third, I believe, and not moving on. And then our musical this year is Cinderella, um, which I, I've never been part of the musical, but there's opportunities for um, different people to play in the pit band. There's So there's always a live band playing. And then there's a huge chorus and cast for every musical as well. Okay. When you mention, can I interrupt? When you mention the uh, the musicals, I can remember way back when we did Joseph and the many colored. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It was just a f fabulous thing. I still think of it, and I it somehow I ended up with the tape of the actual. Hmm. So uh, the, the tradition on on the uh, John at uh, Sparks, I think, was the name of the the guy at the time. But it was just uh, hmm. so the tradition for for the uh, drama has been there for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. And you go to the only school probably in all of Canada that has a great big turkey dinner. You mm -hmm. want to tell them about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so John Jepson has a sports leadership program, um, which is essentially student mentors for sports. And they are the servers and organizers as well as the cafeteria program. So on top of that, um, you can take a class in our school to learn, get your food safe and learn how to work in a kitchen um, with the chef Jessica Mann, and so then we, that class that runs the cafeteria also puts on a turkey dinner, and so they prepare for about a week, and then they run uh, three, three course, three course, six hundred people, bang boom. Yeah, and turkey. then turkey, mashed potatoes. There's the vegetarian thing. options. It's really, it's really fun. And then the sports leadership kids serve, and then there's at the same time. Um, kind of like a talent show where there's elves and Santa shows up and then you can get your photo with him and then it's different people who are very well known in the school for being naughty or never showing up on time or <laughs> anything, being very loud or something, they will receive gifts from Santa um, that leadership has um, thought of. Yeah. The, the first year Tom DeMeo did that dinner, my Com 12 kids said, we're not going. <laughs> I'm not going to a turkey dinner. Well, they did go. They had a wonderful time, and nobody's ever complained about going ever since. It's mm -hmm. a three-course, full turkey dinner for 600 people. They mm -hmm. all go in. They're served very quickly, and it's just a wonderful Christmas winter event. Mm -hmm. So it is around the, it's the Christmas time, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's right before Christmas break. And, and on top of that, teachers often will sing... Uh, yeah. karaoke at it and there's a teacher band that plays which is quite And the fun. community donates turkeys and you know 800 pounds of potatoes and <laughs> it's just an incredible event. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of anything like it anywhere else. And I missed it. I wasn't yeah, there. You weren't <laughs> there. <laughs> now fast uh, fast reverse back to 50 years prior to that Ann Young is going to tell us what it was like to be a Cary High grad in 1966 and uh, what grad was like and what the teachers were like maybe or and then she's carried on being involved with the school ever since so she's still you know stays in close touch with th all things carry high 
Well, I do feel blessed in one way that myself and classmates are all have the distinction of being the first graduating class of Cary High. And we, um, the, the, the odd part is though, we, when we moved, we walked from the other school. Now I say walked, um, I don't remember it. That was 50 years ago and I really don't remember walking. Pictures, though. I kind of think I drove over in my mom's car with friends. Oh. But anyways, we got over there, but we did arrive at Cary High in January. Then we, of course, were finished in June. So our time there was very, very short. But the school not having a gymnasium, we did have our graduation over in the, the original Cary High. So we had, you did it in their gym. But for us, with our graduation, our principal at the time was doc, uh, Dr. Mr. John Young, and he um, sort of tried to say, you know, for his graduation, he'd like us to wear caps and gowns. Well, we, um, as a group, didn't find that nice. We thought it was our graduation, so we tried to insist on letting us have our grad gowns and the, and the fellas wear tuxedos or whatever. Who won? We won. <laughs> but we ended up, we were told, though, we were allowed to wear these dresses and whatnot, but they had to be, or should be, recommended white or pastel. Mm -hmm. And I've verified it with some of my friends because they all talk about what they wore and we have our aquas and we had our lots of pinks apparently. I had a pink. But um, so we did in fact have our graduation in the clothes we wanted, which was kind of nice. But when you said that I'm still involved with Carrie mm -hmm. High, um, being the first graduating class, we had, we've had reunions, over, we've had eight of them over the years. We had them every five years. And our very first one, our 10th reunion was 1976. And at the reunion, we raised some money, obviously charged them to pay for their food and whatnot. And we wanted to give back to Cary High. So we started by buying a very nice book to put in the library uh, in memory or in, on our mm -hmm. behalf. So then that started it. From that moment on, we decided that we'd, we'd have our class reunions. We had a 10, a 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and now we're having a 50th. And at the, the 10th reunion, we decided, we raised our funds and we decided let's have a bursary and call it the class of 66 bursary. So that was established back then, which is why we as a group are still involved with Cary High. Every year we, we put out our submis submission to Jane Komatiki, who will give them to the students that are graduating to apply for. And last year, we had 26 people apply for our bursary. We gave $2,000, which was four $500 ones. And it was, um, it just makes us feel involved because we get mm -hmm. to go back every year to do our bursary. And it's, it's just a nice way to keep in touch with, uh, with Cary High and give back to our school and to have, you know, to help students do what they would like to do in, at, with they're after yeah, they get out of school. Really special. Yeah. Now, Paul Wurz was one of the first teachers, 1966, off and running with uh, Mr. Young, and he was a geography and PE teacher, and perhaps you could tell us what that was like as a teacher. Well, I guess first off, um, we have to talk a little bit about John Young, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> he was kind of a real innovator for education in those, in those years, and I can't remember if he was there five, six, probably at least five years, and uh, it was interesting how I got my job. It was my, I was just fresh out of university and we had the job, teacher job fair at, at the university at mm -hmm. the time and where all the um, high people that hired teachers came to the big armories and so I met John Young there and it just turned out that uh, John Young was, I'm from Karameas in the Okanagan, mm -hmm. a big town in the, in the Smilk Me. And uh, John Young was our neighbor. He just lived across the road from us. And he was the principal of Karamea or Smilkmeen Secondary at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have him, uh, I left the year that he came, but my younger brother had him for, for several years. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting uh, with John Young, uh, when he was at, um, at Karamea, he was a structured, as disciplined as anyone you could imagine. And uh, if the students weren't producing, if the marks were below his expectations, he would keep them all in after school for an hour for a, a lengthy amount of time, and uh, which didn't go over very well in a farming community because we were expected to go home and pick apples and yeah. do what we had to do. And then when he came to, um, Carry high, the things were quite different. And uh, if 
But uh, anyway, I don't know if we want to talk about. Did you? Did he ever explain how he transitioned from being a very tight, disciplined, regimented educator to one that sort of had the freedom with responsibility uh, philosophy? Yeah, I think that he failed to be really strict and structured in the, in the secondary school wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And uh, at Cary High, one of within the first year or two, he got this program called Freedom of Responsibility. And uh, under that process, if um, if you were an honor student, you didn't have to go to class. And uh, that lasted for a year or two, and then eventually evolved to that. You, nobody had to go to class, and uh, as a teacher, that was uh, put a lot of pressure on us. And uh, and I think if you walked into your class and then nobody was there, you kind of asked yourself, you know, why wouldn't people come to hear what I had to say and to try to educate? So yeah, I think that part of his legacy perhaps wasn't discredited exactly, but it's certainly gone the way of the dinosaur because that's not the way schools operate now. When I was in Cary High from 89 to 2009, attendance was supposed to be mandatory. It was uh, very frowned on when kids didn't come to class and still got good marks anyway. And there was all kinds of issues and disciplinary strategies about how to get kids to stay in class and do the work and do it on time and um, just to facilitate their own process of learning. And what's it like now? Are, do you guys get landed on if you miss too many classes? Yeah, I believe that Chantal will check in with you if you're not doing well in a class and you're not attending it very frequently. Um, I don't. I don't think that you would. Att I don't think you would get really in trouble if you're still doing well and you attended it. Yeah, quite a bit. But I'm I not think sure going, though. Going back and when under that process, you had to be a good teacher, and mm -hmm. I think Kerry High always had a tradition of excellent staff, mm -hmm. and I think it started way back in day one that we yeah. have a fabulous staff for the first, well, I was there for 20 years, but I can remember the first years that we always had very qualified and very expert. And now what was it like to not have a gym the first, what, two years? <laughs> yeah, as you mentioned, Dan, that uh, your grad was over at Cary High. Well, the, you, that was one night. Uh, I think the first year I taught PE, we either jogged or we took a bus over to the, uh, it was this, they had two gyms at, at the old junior mm -hmm. high and we had access to one. And that worked out for, I think it was probably a year or so. And then the fall, one, I don't know which preceded what, but we used to go down to the old community hall mm -hmm. and we did our PE down at the community hall. It was kind of interesting because I can still remember the bus driver. He used to come down and sit in, in the bus well between from one hour to the next. So. Eventually, I had, I forget what his name was, but he was a little bit overweight, and, uh, but still fairly young. And he ended up doing PE with us. He actually spent most of the day <laughs> you know, doing a, a big well, regimen of uh, exercising. So. One of the things that impressed me fairly early on when I was teaching at Cary High was the um, teachers on call or the substitute teachers year after year after year and different teachers that weren't connected to each other would come in for a day's work at Cary High and say how happy they were to get the call to come into Cary High. And I'd say, why? Oh, well, they'd say, and they said this year after year, it's because it's so nice here. It's nice in the halls, the kids are polite, the kids are nice, the teachers are prepared, they've got something interesting to do, and uh, their classes are nice classes. and they always thought it was a real bonus for them to come to Cary High for a day to substitute teach. And mm -hmm. I substitute taught for a few years myself somewhere else. And from my own perspective, I'd say that substitute teachers often have a really good feel for what's going on in schools because they come mm -hmm. in and they leave. They, they see the best and the worst. And they all liked being in Cary High. And I think everybody said that every year I've ever known of that school is it's just a really nice place to be and nice kids one of the reasons the kids I think are so accepting and 
decent to each other is because they come from all over the place. We've mm -hmm. got kids from Sayward, Cortez, Quadra. Uh, we've got First Nations kids. Most of them, we've got the French immersion kids. They're from all over the place mm -hmm. in Campbell River. And all these kids from all these different places come to Cary High and, and they're safe there and they're respected and they're treated well and mm -hmm. they're treated like they matter and they're, they're, they're cultivated. And uh, it rubs off on everything. The kids treat each other well and they teach, well, it's not always true that they teach, take, treat their teachers well, because some of them, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, but that's what you were saying the other day when we were talking. It's about Carrie High and having that wonderful, that anybody, you could come even if you and yourself feeling very uh, different because they're all accepting. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. that's got to speak volumes for a school. Yeah. You know, it makes it a comfortable place to be. Well, I remember one year back in the early 90s, uh, we had a whole bunch of kids come from several other schools a, from a different several schools from a different part of town and they were refugees escaping um, what they saw as uh, student driven nastiness mm -hmm. and and they came to carry high and just sort of settled in the back row and breathed a sigh of relief and oh my goodness you know we're we're okay here we're not being scorned out we're not being treated badly we might be a bit peculiar, but it, you know, it, we're not being treated like dirt. Yeah. So I had, I, I say, after I was there for 20, and just as I left, mm -hmm. my three uh, siblings came into the system. Came into the system, and uh, so as I had a first was a son, and then a daughter, and then 10 years later, yeah. another son. But they all loved Cary High. Yeah. They all excelled. All three of my kids came yeah. through Cary High, and they, when they knew that their mother and and they, and they were going to share the same halls, oh, mother, just don't even look at me. <laughs> just not, you know, stay over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just pretend you don't mind. I said, okay, that's fine. Yeah. So I did that, and then in about a week, it says, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I avoided that, right? Yeah. I went to a yeah. different school. <laughs> Chantal always jokes that the reason everyone is so accepting and loving of each other at our school is because the hallways are wider than other schools. <laughs> We're not always you know, bumping into each other. You know, there might be something to that. There might be something to that. But I definitely think it has to do with that. Everyone's coming from, it. it's sort of like the leftover school. Everyone's yeah. from Quadra or Cortez or... Well, we, we've yeah. tried to cultivate a very good, positive relationship with the First Nations that, are, that come to our school, too. Mm -hmm. And we've got programs specific to their culture, their history, their needs, their languages. I think we were the first school yeah. to offer First, first Nations, Nations studies. Yeah. 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 And that's really important. So it's just a very special school, and I think we all feel privileged that we were part of the school and part of mm -hmm. its culture and um, are certainly looking forward to the reunion, which is when? 21st? 21st. And have, have the different grading classes got different rooms aligned, allotted? Well, well Laurel was ju has just appointed, you know, different classrooms to different of the years and I know she offered one to us and I we've said you know they should actually give it give it up because we do have our own class reunion and we're going to have like an icebreaker and stuff we don't want to feel greedy and take over the room because it, it's offered to people and they were available like if you're if your class particular class wanted to do something you could they welcomed you to take a mm -hmm. tell them and take a room so as far as the actual um the 21st it's from four till nine o'clock and they've got lots of plans they've got entertainment and it's, um, I'm hoping for every all the hard work that's gone into it that it's going to be well received, and I'm sure it will. So it's just basically dropping in and. Uh, well, you can yeah drop by and, and uh, spend the day. They'll there's a ceremony at six. I six o'clock. And there's all kinds of things to see if you've been in Cary High. Every single grad class is is uh, their the grad class picture. Every one of them is lined up in the walkway down to the gym area and. Everybody goes down and finds themselves, and, um, and there's all kinds of displays. There's a 1966 display. Mm -hmm. They've done well. They've done all the class, the age, like in the the um, where the trophy cases are. You mm -hmm. mean those ones? Yeah, they've mm -hmm. done up a bunch of years. Yeah, Marilyn Hilston's art banners will be hanging, I think, in the library, and 
those are unique to Cary High too. I think different students will have booths there as yeah. well for different clubs. But it's always and fun I, to look back though, right? Mm -hmm. And come and find a face, and especially if you're looking for your, a relative of yours. You know, I remember when my grandson, I still upset, I wanted him to graduate and stay in Cary High, but he didn't, but he remembers going to our picture and actually spotting me, which cracked me <laughs> up. I thought, you sure didn't know me then. Anyhow, and it is Paul? a nice. But I think it, what you'll find for the students that haven't been there for a long time, like I dropped into Cary High last week, and it was the first time probably in 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. and everything has sort of has changed. The facility, the library is completely different what you know, it was 20 years ago, and the gymnasium, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's going to be just a, a great experience for, for the old timers to walk around and, and try to remember what was what. Well, hopefully you, know? you can find some of your old teachers and bug them one more time or find some old pals you haven't seen for many years and even if you don't do that you can see all the uh, displays and everything that's up there and just see how the school has evolved and changed. It's, it's going to be a wonderful evening and we know that Cary High has a very deep ties in Campbell River and an awful lot of people really care about that school and we hope you come and enjoy a couple hours just bouncing around the halls, sort of, if you want to feel nostalgic, go ahead and uh, have a good look around and satisfy your curiosity and we hope to see everybody there because we're going to be there <laughs> and we're looking forward to a wonderful evening celebrating a very special school. So we hope you all come. <laughs>